Hello everybody, welcome to the channel, it's Polyester here, and who likes free stuff? You do! Let's check out this developer update today. So today, the devs put out a developer update for November, let's check it out. Welcome to the November edition of our developer update, a series of posts detailing upcoming changes and our progress on ongoing issues. As always, we'll start by recapping on previous topics before jumping into future updates. Dedicated servers. For a little over a month, dedicated servers have been live on the PC version of the game. Over the course of this test, we have often been asked why the servers were left on without any updates. We'd like to take this opportunity to explain a little more about the test. First and foremost, we can tweak certain values behind the scenes without requiring a game update. This includes things like what the game deems to be an acceptable connection and various matchmaking elements. This way we can test a variety of changes without forcing everyone to update their game repeatedly. Leaving the servers on also allows us to collect far more feedback. We are hard at work making sure that as many gameplay issues as possible are ironed out before the full launch of dedicated servers. We have been including fixes for some of the most pressing issues in recent updates, including a fix for delayed stalking in the 3.3.2 hotfix. Thanks to reports we have received thus far, we are looking to improve certain killer powers, perks, for example, dead hard, and the interaction si system kicking pallets or generators. Finally, this test gives us an opportunity to test the upcoming disconnection handling system, which allows us to better punish people who disconnect excessively. We want to make sure that disconnects are being tracked accurately so players aren't wrongly timed out, and to do so, we need to leave dedicated servers enabled in order to test the new detection. In case you missed it, you can find the details of this system here. I was remarking today that the dedicated servers have seen better. So, uh, yeah. We, I've noticed. I've noticed your work on these devs. Dedicated servers have been better for me the last couple of days. The archives. With the last mid-chapter, we launched a brand new feature, the archives. We're happy to see the most positive reception so far, although we're taking note of feedback as well. We'd like to address some of the common feedback we've received from this first rift and tome. One of the main talking points is the difficulty of the first tome. This first level of the tome is fairly easy to complete, often taking only one match to complete a given challenge. This was an intentional decision by our team. We wanted to make sure that this level served as an introduction to the archives so everyone could get an understanding of how the features worked. At the same time, due to an error, some of you may have seen a sneak peek of the fourth level of the tome. This level is significantly more difficult than the first. You don't say. The intention is for the levels to gradually become more challenging the further you progress. With that in mind, we intend to use the following levels to gather feedback and adjust future levels and tomes if needed. We had previously announced the dates of each of the tome, each level the tome would release. However, due to an unforeseen delay with the 3.3.0 update, we need to push back the release dates for these levels to match. And the new dates are as follows. Level 2, November the 13th, we already came out. Level 3, November 27th, and Level 4, December the 18th. Now, here's where we get to the good free stuff. Exclusive Cosmetics. Alongside the launch of Chapter 14, we'll be granting everyone the following cosmetics. Everyone means every platform. Granting means free. Free cosmetics for everyone on every platform. The Chuckles Trapper Ultra Rare Mask, the Dweird Dwight Ultra Rare Head, the Sharp Mustache Jake Ultra Rare Head, Studded Jacket Jake Ultra Rare Body, Retro Windbreaker Claudette Ultra Rare Head, Claudette's Weekend Shirt Ultra Rare Body, Purple Cords for Claudette Ultra Rare Legs, Leather Hoodie for Meg Ultra Rare Body, Retro Sneakers for Meg Ultra Rare Legs, the Big Hat Ace Ultra Rare Head, the Taipei Game Show Hat Ace Ultra Rare Head, Laser Bears Victory Polo for Fung Min Ultra Rare Body, Laser Bears Victory Shorts for Fung Min Ultra Rare Pants, Donkey Jacket for David King Ultra Rare Body, The Hound for the Huntress Event Mask, The Untamed Donkey Jacket for David King Event Body, Propane Hammer Hillbilly Event Weapon, and Free Songbird Slip Dress Kate Denson Event Body. I'll go through uh, after this what all of these are, because you may not understand exactly what these cosmetics are. There are a few reasons why we've decided to unlock these cosmetics for everyone. To start, most of these cosmetics were unlocked using Steam codes and could not be unlocked on the console versions of the game, meaning we couldn't give these codes to console players. Given this limitation, we have moved away from exclusive items in recent years and want to continue the trend of making cosmetics available to everyone equally. Most importantly, these codes for these cosmetics were also being sold by code resellers for exorbitant amounts of money. Others were taking advantage of this by creating fake listings to scam people out of their money. This is not something we endorse and not something we are able to support if someone does fall victim to one of these scams. 
By giving these cosmetics to everyone, we hope to put an end to the shady resellers and scams while also including everyone, regardless of what platform they play on. All of these cosmetics were at one point given out for free at different conventions. They were never meant to be resold. People kept these codes, didn't redeem them, and made an aftermarket out of them. And as they became more scarce, the value of these things went up and up and up. And obviously some people were scamming. Um, again, now they're just giving them out for free one more time. Are there people who have spent quite a bit of money to obtain these? Yes, but that was their choice. The devs never made any of that money. They gave all of these things out for free. Future events. Recently, we changed the way we handle in-game events and wanted to take a moment to explain why we're putting elaborate objectives on hold. Unique objectives take a huge amount of time to create and test, taking up time that could be spent fixing bugs and creating new content that's available year-round. Going forward, events will be focused around extra blood points through offerings and or blood hunts, archive challenges, and event exclusive rewards within the free track of the rift. This allows us to focus our efforts on game health, which we ultimately feel is for the best. I did hear some complaints for this withering blight that the people miss the flowers, milking the flowers, and they didn't really like earning their serum in um, the free track of the rift. This is the new normal. Um, look, I was hoping that the gens and hooks would have some kind of a special noise or animation too. Uh, the pumpkins were cool. I, I'm, I'll give them that. It wasn't uh, what we've seen in past events, but it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. The, I loved all my pustulas. I had a lot of pustula petal flowers die on the vine. I wish I could have spent them all because it was a great bonus for blood points. And if that's the way the events are going to run from now on, where I can play offerings to get more blood points, I'm all for it. Spirit changes. My buddy the king has made a whole video about these spirit changes. I'm going to link it as the top comment and in the description of this video so that you can listen to him do much better analysis of spirit changes than I could. Um, admittedly, analysis of killer strengths is not my forte, so I'm going to leave that to him. Basically, it just goes through the spirit changes that are coming out in 3.4. They're going to remove her collision during Yama ha Yamaoka's haunting so that she can't bump into people and figure out where survivors are. She'll pass through them so she won't know when she's bumping into you. And they're going to give her a window vault animation so that you can tell when she's vaulting through the window rather than just seeing her materialize on the other side after just standing still. And they're also going to change the... Um, the prayer beads so that instead of her being silent when she's haunting and moving around the map you will hear her whooshing noise map wide so you'll know that she's haunting somewhere you just won't know where um, and you'll just have to be careful and since she can't just bump into you and feel you on the generator she won't be able to silently bump into you feel you on the generator and grab you anymore there's more to it than that but like i said i'm gonna leave it to king to go over those things so check out his video and it says here, this concludes the November edition of the developer update. Be sure to let us know what you think, the Dead by Daylight team. Now I'm going to go over these cosmetics and show you what a tremendous value it is that they're giving you. So this is all the free stuff that you're going to get. Uh, well, most of it. There's a couple things here in this section of the wiki that aren't included in the free package. Let's go over it right now. Unavailable DLCs. The following DLCs could only be obtained through special codes and only on the Steam PC version of the game. Weird and Sharp Mustache Jake. This was the first DLC that added new survivor customization options for Dead by Daylight. The DLC could only be obtained at PAX West 2016 and New York Comic Con 2016. This DLC included a uh, new head attire for Jake Park and Dwight Fairfield. You might think that you already have these, but you don't. This is Dweird. What uh, was given out for the anniversary event was Dweirder, which he had more stubble on his head and he had red glasses. And then the sharp mustache man Jake had gray hair. Those are slight variations. These are the originals, the OG cosmetics. Trapper Mask Chuckles. This was the first DLC that added new killer customization options for Dead by Daylight. This DLC could only be obtained at PAX West 2016. This DLC includes a new mask for the Trapper. Again, you might think you already own this, but this is an off-white. The um, Iron Chuckles is... Um, a bright white and the teeth are a different color. I'll show you in game the difference between these. Daddy Jake. This DLC can only be obtained at TwitchCon 2016. The DLC includes new torso attire for Jake Park. 
Uh, I don't think they ever remade that one. Science Fair Claudette and Street Mag. This DLC could only be obtained at TwitchCon 2016 or through special giveaways. DLC included new torso and new leg attire for Claudette Morel and Meg Thomas. Um, they put out alternate ones of the Science Fair Claudette and the Street Mag in the game. These are the OG ones. Those are different too. Now, here's where we get into the ones that are the big bucks. The Thailand Big Tournament Exclusive. This DLC could only be obtained at Thailand Big Tournament 2016. This DLC includes a new head attire for Ace Visconti. And the Taipei Game Show Exclusive. This DLC could only be obtained at the Taipei Game Show 2017. This DLC included a new head attire for Ace Visconti. So, yeah, these hats, last time I checked, were selling for like $400, $500 a piece on eBay. I don't think there's any on eBay right now. Brazilian Comic Con Experience Tour Exclusive. This DLC could only be obtained at the Brazilian Comic Con Experience Tour 2017. This DLC included a new torso attire for Claudette Morel. This Brazil weekend Claudette is crazy. I saw one completed auction on eBay for $2,500. I saw three for $800 a piece, like just last week. This is a crazy expensive cosmetic. There appears to be another customization option for Feng Min that was designed for that event, but not discovered until April 2018. It remains undistributed to this day. That would be pretty cool if that came out, actually, since they're giving away stuff. Now, this is the one that isn't coming out for free, this bloodletting um, white trapper t-shirt. This DLC could only be obtained when purchasing an item for the official Dead by Daylight merchandise store. It includes this torso attire for Dwight Fairfield. My theory on why this one isn't being included is because you actually had to buy something from the merch store to get this. All of these others were given away for free at these conventions. They just handed out these cards that had codes on them. This one, you actually had to buy something. So I think they're holding this one back so that it isn't a slap in the face to people who bought merch from them and now they're turning around giving it away. That's my theory anyway, I don't know for sure. The Golden Feng Min exclusive. This DLC could only be obtained at the Shanghai We Play 2017. DLC includes new torso and leg attire for Feng Min, the Golden Feng. That last time I checked, that was like $900. David's Donkey Jacket. This DLC could only be obtained at the South Korea G-Star Global Gaming 2017. Includes a uh, new torso attire for David King. This one was given to me by a very kind person from South Korea. They wanted me to have it, and uh, they got a bunch of codes, and they said, I want you to have this. They just sent me the code, and I wore that jacket proudly for quite a long time. Uh, this, I believe, sells for like $100, $150 right now. Okay, now we get into the YouTubers and streamers exclusives. You're, uh, you're not going to see any of these come out for free because they have logos for this certain content creators, and they can't just give those things out. They have to get permission from those people. So those aren't going to be included in this package of free giveaway stuff. Okay, so I'm going to go through these cosmetics just as they appear on the list as quickly as I can. Um, as I said, I, some of you may believe that you already own these, but that's not necessarily the case. So we're going to start out here with the Chuckles Mask. As you can see, this has an off-white color to the mask, and it has steel bars on the back, and the teeth look like they're very dark color. If you go to this one here, Iron Chuckles, you can see the mask is a bright white, has black straps and bright white teeth. So check these out there. They are quite different. So the Iron Chuckles was given out for the first anniversary of the game. This was a convention exclusive. So this is Dweird. The style is unbalanced and that's all Dwight. You can see he has black glasses and a fully shaven head. If you look at the Dweirder, this is a stubbly head with red rim glasses. So it's similar, but different. Same goes for Jake and uh, his sharp mustache. So if we go on his head here, we have sharp mustache man, Jake. And for the anniversary, they gave us this one where it's old man, Jake with the gray hair. This was the convention exclusive, this ultra rare. And um, while we're here, we have the studded jacket, the Daddy Jake studded jacket. That one goes good with his studded pants. Um, next, we're going to go on to Claudette. And we have the Retro Windbreaker and the Purple Cords. 
Nothing goes better than soft pastel in the woods, and purple goes with everything, doesn't it? They never did a, an anniversary um, redo of these pants, but the jacket they did, and where's that one here? It's very, the old school windbreaker, Unleash Your Inner Salmon. So you can see that the, um, the teal is a different color on the stripes of the jacket, and there's a different print on the sweater here. It's pretty similar, but it's not the same. So that's the Science Fair Claudette that you're going to be getting. And for Meg, we have her um, leather hoodie. You can see that this has a yellow lining on it. Yellow lining on the hoodie. And they redid this one too with the... Um, where's it at? So many jackets. Page three. Here we go. Red trim leather hoodie. This was the anniversary one with the number 68 on it and the, the pink shirt. Similar, but different. This is the original Street Meg, and she came with the, um, the bubblegum pink sneakers. These pants. That's your Street Meg. Okay, the Ace Hats I can't show you. They're very expensive. I never owned those. I also can't show you the Golden Fung Min. I do, however, have the donkey david jacket because a friendly gentleman from south korea was kind enough to give me one of these and i wore it with pride for a long time i i really enjoyed that they um thought enough of me to give me a coat and they knew that i wasn't going to sell it when they were selling for 300 dollars at the time they knew that i was going to actually play it and use it in game and i did Next on the list. Okay, now we're getting into some of the event exclusives. And a lot of people have a problem with these event exclusives. This is the Untamed Donkey Jacket. This was the Lunar Year one that you had to do the event and earn your coins to cash in for this. Um, I have a theory why they're giving out these event ones. And I'll talk about it here in a minute after we get through the killer ones. The other event one on the Survivor side was for Kate Denson, her free spirit top for the summer barbecue, the free songbird, free spirit, summer barbecue top. And then we'll switch over to killer for the other two. So for the summer barbecue on the killer side, we had this propane hammer with eyeballs on it. It's a little mini propane tank with uh, skewered eyeballs on it. It's pretty gross, but it's funny. Uh, again, this was something you had to get an in-game currency. And if you got enough, you could unlock this hammer. And then the other killer one that we had that was event related was for the Huntress. And she had this hound mask for the Lunar New Year. Hush little one, she bears her teeth, but she won't bite unless you make her. Happy Lunar New Year 2018 by the Dead by Daylight team. So uh, this is another one that you had to do enough. You had to grind in the event to earn your coins and cash them in for cosmetics. So now my theory on why these are being given out is I've seen a lot of people have come to me and said, hey, uh, I had this cosmetic disappear, I had this cosmetic disappear. A lot of that's happening. I don't know what the bug was that was making these items disappear from people's inventory, but um, I would always recommend that they contact support and try to let them know that it happened and get them back. So I don't have any proof for this, but my theory is that they just had so many of these cases come along that it was an uh, incredible chore to manually reinstate everybody's cosmetics that at some point they just said, oh, what the heck, let's just give it to everybody. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, it could be. But anyway, who cares? If somebody else gets something that you had to earn. So just to show you that I'm telling the truth about the aftermarket value of these items, we're going to do a completed search here for sold items on eBay. Top of the list here is the uh, Ohm Wrecker exclusive. That's still going to remain an Ohm Wrecker exclusive because that's a content creator item that belongs to him. Second on the list would be this um, white bloodletting shirt. Again, that required a purchase through the merch store, so I don't think we're going to see that one. But then we come down here to the Dweird and Sharp Mustache Jake. It's $150 sold. There's Street Mag and Science Fair Claudette. $150 sold. $145, $144. You know, these are, I'm not joking when I say how much these cosmetics cost. Here's the completed listing for Brazil Claudette, $2,500. If you don't think that that auction really went through and that somebody exchanged that amount of money, well, we'll go down here, $800, $800, $800. They sold like on just within a couple of days here. 
for that much money. That's an expensive cosmetic. Same thing, Donkey David here, $215, $170, $170, and on and on. Like, these are expensive cosmetics that they're giving us. There's Fung Min, $700, $868. There's the Daddy Jake, $60, $60. And these are all green, right? So that means that they were purchased. This, these aren't auctions that died on the vine. When they're green, that means that they bought it, that, that was sold at that price. $40 to $60 for Daddy Jake for this studded jacket. There's the Chuckles, $50, $25. That was one of the lower ones. I think Chuckles and um, Daddy Jake were the cheapest ones. So the next time as a console player that you feel like the devs don't care about you as a console player or as a PC player that you feel like, man, these devs, they always have their hand out for some money. I want you to reflect back on this moment and remember how I demonstrated to you that these cosmetics that you're going to get we're selling for thousands of dollars on eBay, and you're getting them for free. They didn't have to do this. They didn't have to give them to people for free. They could have sold these for $5, $10. Nobody would have batted an eye, because you don't think that all the people who have seen these auctions selling Golden Fungmin for $700, $800 wouldn't bat an eye to spend $10 to get it out of the cosmetic shop. They could have made bank on all of these cosmetics, putting them in the shop, and they didn't. Because they gave them away for free initially, and they're giving them away for free again. And kudos to them. Whatever you say, you have to give them a lot of credit for that. Because they, they could have sold a ton of these, and nobody would have said a word. And yeah, I understand that there's people who are extremely upset because they spent hundreds of dollars in cosmetics on eBay and the aftermarket to get these in their in their game. But, um, you know, nobody made them do that. Like... The devs didn't get any of that money. All of these cosmetics were given away by them. They were never intended to be sold. So devs didn't get any of the money of any sales on eBay. So that was all on the people who bought them. It was like the risk that they took when they bought them. I've been in the collectibles game a long time and there's stuff that sometimes you buy it and it becomes worthless. And sometimes there's stuff that you buy it and it becomes valuable. It's just the way that it is. I've had uh, comics like The Killing Joke where I had a stack of them that were worth a lot of money and then DC decided they wanted to reprint the comic book 15 times, so, you know, it happens. There's nothing you can really do about it but accept it. And I just don't think that the company that gave these away for free and decided to give more away for free holds any blame in anything about whatever money anyone spent on any cosmetic. Hey, I have codes personally that, you know, uh, don't have any kind of value to me now because everyone's going to get them for free. I could have given them away as giveaways or things like that, and now... They are uh, worthless, but that's just the way it goes. So yeah, I see that there's people who are upset that they're giving away cosmetics that others worked hard for to earn in-game and other people are just going to get it for free, but ah, uh, what's the harm? It's not hurting anything. Some people say, well, it makes me feel less special. And uh, I would just say to that, like what my mom used to say to me, it's like, sweetie, you're not special because of what you wear, you're special because of who you are. <laughs> And the other great bit of news we have today, other than free stuff coming, is that 3.3.2, uh, the update is now out on the Nintendo Switch. So you can download that and start playing the archives right now. My son already downloaded it, and they were keeping track of how much he played uh, up until now. So he got like the first seven tiers of uh, the Rift for free because of what he played when the archives came out. So he's got a little jump start on that. Uh, he's only behind on the challenges, really, and with... Um, Level 2 only coming out yesterday, and the level the level 1 challenge is being pretty easy. He should be able to catch up fairly quick, I would imagine. Same with all of you on Nintendo Switch, so have fun. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Free stuff? Who doesn't like free stuff? I mean, I, I've got most of those, and I'm still happy that I'm going to get Golden Fung Min and those Ace Hats, I'll tell you that, because those are things that even I would drool at on eBay and go, man, $2,500 for Claudette and the green shirt from Brazil. That's crazy. But I know that there's going to be a ton of Brazilians who are going to be rocking that and are going to be so happy to have that cosmetic. And at the end of the day, the devs making people happy. Why? Why should we be upset about that? Why should we be upset about the devs making so many people happy in the community? It's crazy, right? Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.